Thank you, Marco. I just want to say before we start that uh, this is the first uh, webinar of Wind Empowerment this year. And uh, we're organizing these webinars in order to bring together WE members and anyone who is active or interested with small wind turbines for rural electrification to share our projects and give feedback to each other. So if you feel like presenting your project uh, in a future webinar, uh, you can send us an email to windempowerment.group at gmail.com and you can find this address uh, in the chat log and uh, we will put you in the list for the future webinars. So today the webinar will last uh, one hour, uh, including uh, questions. Uh, and there's a possibility for an extra 30 minutes in case some of you want to stay on for discussion. And for those who are not able to participate today, uh, the webinar will be recorded and uploaded to the website so you can view it at any time. So we are hosting today Marco, Marco Ogno, Adam Lord and Giacomo Senatore. Uh, Marco, uh, you already presented yourself. Uh, he, he's a uh, mechanical engineer in uh, currently working in Rolls-Royce. Adam is also a mechanical engineer uh, working for Siemens Gamesa Renewable Energy and Giacomo uh, holds an MSc in Space Engineering and is working for the Aviation uh, as our NTD Program Manager. And all of them have been volunteering with uh, uh, I Love Wind Power for the projects in Brazil. Marco has organized uh, three workshops in Brazil since 2013. And uh, Adam and Giacomo joined uh, later the team in 2017. So I give you the lead to start your presentation. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Katharina. Um, it's Marco here. So hi, everyone. Good afternoon, good morning, uh, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Um, so first of all, before to start, Katharina, I just wanted to say, I think on behalf of all of us, uh, uh, thank you very much for organizing this. Uh, I think uh, we're all really excited to present uh, uh, Allo Empire Brazil and uh, what we've done uh, uh, last year. So again, uh, thank you very much uh, to give us the opportunity to, to share our work. Uh, so today we're going to talk about uh, an improved uh, modular wooden tower design, uh, which you actually can see in the background. So that's actually the end result of uh, our hard work uh, in 2017 in, in Brazil. Uh, but uh, yeah, before to start, just uh, I, will, I think it's nice to show the team. So, so in Brazilian, and uh, you see from uh, the left to the right, Giacomo, Adam, and uh, and myself. So this is a picture in Rio de Janeiro after after the the workshop. We're all happy, and uh, yeah, <laughs> that's us basically. So what for today? <laughs> So what for today, um, quickly going um, around what uh, Allo Wind Power Brazil is, just to give a little bit of uh, uh, an understanding of the association, then uh, diving on uh, uh, obviously the what we've done, so the improved wooden tower, uh, tower design. Uh, so give an opportunity to show you a little bit more the technical side of it. Uh, Adam will, will take that uh, with part. And then uh, the third uh, main part is going to be on cost uh, uh, operations and benchmark, which uh, Giacomo will lead, uh, which then uh, will bring us to the next step and uh, the open forum. Uh, just before to start to go through, uh, guys, I recognize a lot of material is, is new for most of you. So please feel free to stop uh, me anytime and the other guys anytime, ask questions. I think. Uh, uh, if we can make it as much in interactive uh, as possible, I think it will be more fun and more clear for everyone. So, you know, just feel free to ask. Uh, and at the end, uh, also, we have a kind of a 3D CAD model that uh, Adam uh, worked on it. And he will be able to show you if you have anything that uh, you're not clear on. And we can visualize stuff, which is, I guess, uh, really, really useful. Right. So, first. First uh, is, uh, so I love environment uh, is, a, is a movement that obviously focuses on uh, open source uh, wind power. 
It started in the Netherlands by uh, Pete uh, in 2017. You can see a picture of Pete uh, on the bottom right. And uh, the movement has been active uh, quite extensively around. Uh, but uh, at the minute, I think Brazil is, uh, is what uh, is really standing out from, uh, from the movement. Obviously, for the, uh, let's say for the vision of the movement, uh, uh, it really matched with what the wind environment uh, is doing. And that's why uh, wind empowerment has always been part of uh, uh, the network of uh, wind empowerment. Uh, if we look, at it, so our project really, uh, it started uh, a little bit later. It started in 2012 uh, when uh, Pete uh, was invited to attend the Rio Plus 20 conference, uh, which was in Rio de Janeiro. There was an, uh, an amazing opportunity for Allow Wind Power to show our technology, the, the UP good uh, wind turbine design. Uh, but also a good chance to meet with the local uh, organizations. So in 2012, uh, Pete met with uh, Berimbau de Oro, which is, uh, as you can see from the bottom picture, uh, funded by Luis Carlos, and is based in Montes Claros, which is, uh, you can see where it is in the map uh, on, the, on the left side, is basically in the bottom uh, center of Brazil. And yeah, the Berimbau de Oro, um, it's more focused on about is is in is was born as a school for capoeira for kids uh, to try to bring them out from the street, but then they developed to do some other projects uh, and part of it was about environmental projects and that's why they got interested about uh, their low wind power uh, technology the UP good design and that's why we decided to do a collaboration together. So I started to lead the project in 2013 when I first uh, went there. And uh, that's where it all started for us in, in Brazil. Um, just wanted to share with you when we started. Uh, we have three key milestones, basically. One was in, in 2015, uh, try to get a really local capability in Brazil. So teach the local guys how to do it. And obviously have uh, people uh, accountable for it and a kind of a future workshop planned to, to grow uh, this capability. Uh, then the, the next one was uh, for 2020, try to really understand the business case and the market assessment of uh, um, Brazil and be able to identify, uh, a, a, let's say, a, a local uh, center of competence where we could uh, do uh, trainings, so training new people and actually producing uh, turbines uh, and towers uh, at rate as, as, as required. And then the, the final aim, really, our vision will be to be able to build a, a sustainable business uh, in Brazil that obviously provides turbines uh, and uh, basically with the fact that we sell turbines and electricity, we can pay the guys to work on, on, on this model. And uh, why not then extend uh, this kind of uh, uh, business across all Brazil and maybe across all uh, kind of uh, more South America. So that's the vision. Uh, the reason why we have put a traffic light uh, on the, the first milestone 2015 will become clear in the next slides. So if I go, what is uh, a lot of data here, but I think I will pick the key one. Um, deliver the workshops in 13, uh, 15 and 17. Uh, we managed during this time to install uh, two uh, wooden towers and uh, two wind turbines on top of it, both of them in Montes Claros, which is where we started re really. Uh, but then we also managed to kind of uh, expand uh, our footprint and go in and Diamantina, uh, where we also put uh, a wind data logger uh, and we have also one in Montes Claros. So we start to accumulate the data, wind data, so we can actually understand uh, um, our business case. Then in the time being, uh, we managed to train uh, uh, a lot of people, but uh, we actually developed people that um, have followed us. So from 2015, we managed to teach two people in particular, Oliver and Peter, which are now able to kind of reproduce uh, wind turbine and tower um, uh, in Brazil. And then obviously we engaged with social organizations there to make it uh, really happen. Um, the other thing to note is currently, uh, Allow Wind Power uh, is not an official social organization, it's not uh, an NGO that is registered anywhere. So for us, that's uh, something that we need to work on and uh, we can talk uh, later at the end of the presentation uh, a little bit more about it. So the reason why in 2015 really we have uh, a yellow traffic light is actually that in 2015, 
the the workshop uh, basically what we presented in the first webinar so it was design uh, the first design of the wooden tower modular uh, um, uh, tower that we wanted to bring in uh, in brazil uh, we did implement it so we managed to do a, a small uh, a tower for the turbine that you can see at the, at the school in montes claros on the uh, on the top side on the right and also we developed the full 12 meters wooden tower that you can see on the bottom left picture however this original design in 2015 when we tried to lift it and put uh, in operation uh, it failed and this is the reason why the 2017 project uh, really started we recognized that we wanted to we needed to improve we need to make uh, some changes to make it work and uh, this is where i really would like to hand over to to adam that can walk you through what really uh, we did uh, as a team thank you so adam i'm just gonna give the the presenting okay Ball, so you can drive it from your side make present you should have the ball now yep uh, can everybody see my screen yeah. yes okay great um, thank you Marco for a great introduction no problem um, so um, you all saw the pictures about, um, unfortunately, what happened in 2015. First of all, I'd like to say that they, just, in spite of that, they did a fantastic job. Um, they they came up with the whole concept um, and they got, you know, really most of the way to solving it. It's just that, unfortunately, um, they had so many things to do um, that they pretty much just ran out of time and they had to leave before they could install the tower. So by no means a criticism on their part. They did a great job. Um, and um, they, we, we, we were left with a challenge of how to um, do some retrofits, some, some redesigns um, of how to, in 2017, to go back um, and just to finish off and just to, just, just to polish off the, the design, solve the remaining problems um, and then reinstall the turbine. Um, so if you look at, this is a cab model of the whole tower, um, which we, which we um, installed in 17. <clears throat> um, and you can see the, the five areas that we improved. Um, so I'm going to go through those five areas with you um, and just explain um, the failure that we identified um, and then the solution that we implemented to, to rectify that problem. Um, so, I mean, the first thing I'll say about these failures is it was the, one of the hardest things was actually getting all the information because, um, you know, we're sitting in Europe, various places places and then there's a remote farm in Brazil where people don't go that often and, and uh, it's, it's, it's just difficult to get the accurate information that you want. So we have very limited pictures and um, when you look at the picture on the top right you might be looking at that and thinking well it's obvious that if you pull back a tower at that angle which isn't directly backwards then it's, it's going to have trouble being lifted um, but <laughs> somehow we didn't make that connection until we got there um, and when we got there we realized okay well you know they've just cast a foundation in the wrong angle and actually we needed to turn the foundation around so that the lifting pole and the tower were directly like in front of that wire which is going up to the lifting pole so that when you pull the tower up it's going to go straight up and probably that was the biggest problem that we overcame um, and maybe if we'd only changed that the whole thing would have still worked um, but um, nonetheless, um, we wanted to be sure. So we, of course, of course, went on to correct the other things as well. Um, so um, the way we fixed this problem was, um, if you can see on the bottom right picture, um, there's um, the, the old foundation is underneath in the old angle. Um, and then we put the new foundation on top and we actually put some ropes from the anchor points, so four anchor points. Um, and, and we put some ropes over those to going going to the foundation so we were sure that it was directly in the center and it was at the right angle. Um, we used the old foundation bolts as reinforcement. We used rocks as reinforcement. We used some local cement, which we found, um, and it was strong enough. Um, and then we had the foundation bolts coming out of those holes, which you can see on that makeshift casting template out of cardboard. Um, and uh, then the foundation was in the right angle. So then we could uh, carry on. Um, one of our problems that Giacomo will touch on later is that the cement actually takes a long time to dry. Um, so there was a lot of waiting after that part. Um, and during the time while we were waiting, um, we could actually focus on some of the other um, issues that we saw. So 
Um, another one was about the the guy wires. Um, so the guy wires are the things which support the construction laterally. Um, so it's a guy wire supported wooden tower, and this is stopping it swaying too much from side to side. Um, but but last time, if you see on the top left picture there, um, you're actually looking at the tower like from the top. So you can see the way the guy wires were attached before, like they were just attached just above where the um, the modules are connected with each other. Um, so that combined with the fact that the the plates, the plywood plates used to connect the modules weren't that strong, might have been another cause for failure because that that was it was giving it that extra moment, that extra twisting um, on that weak spot, which we which didn't help the tower anyway. So to resolve that, we actually moved the um, lifting point and the guy wires to just below um, the the place where the um, the modules are connecting, um, which is um, definitely design improvement and it worked fine. Um, and um, that was for the first three modules. For the fourth module, um, we actually used part of the turbine structure itself, which was a pole, um, which is actually holding the turbine. So that was also a fine solution. Um, the hinge system. So this is an area I spent quite a lot of time working on before we went to Brazil, because this was, um, you know, this was something clear from the pictures that we had an issue. Um, so you can see that that bolt, which is an M20 bolt, that's one of the largest bolts you can actually find in Brazil, and still it sheared, and that was um, it twisted, it sheared, and we couldn't work out why. Um, so what did we do to correct that problem? Um, well, it's quite simple mechanics. Um, so you got the um, all of the load, um, all of the pressure coming onto the center of that foundation bolt in the initial design on the top. Um, and then if you if you redesign the whole hinge system, the way that the uh, the metal is interfacing with the bolt, the hinge is interfacing with the bolt in such a way that um, the gap um, between the, the the foundation side plates. Um, and the and the hinge and the L plate on the hinge is very very much reduced. You're actually you're actually reducing the moment on the bolt because you're reducing the distance and, and the moment is the force times the distance. Um, and that was a very simple, very practical step we could take to you know reusing the existing um, design, you know, most some of the parts anyway, um, and you know ma making some new parts to to rectify that problem. Um, so that worked fine. Um, everybody was happy with that, and of course it worked. Um, and then we've got the um, module interconnection. So I've already touched on this. Um, I already stated that um, unfortunately the plywood that they used last time was not um, really sufficient. Um, it was really thin. Um, it was quite weak. And, and compared with the main wood, the main wood is called Paroba. That's a locally sourced wood. It, it's it was much weaker. Um, so what we did, and we maybe you could you could argue that we went over the top, but I think that we were just being a little bit on the conservative side. We were just being on the safe side. We actually got the strongest wood um, which was available um, locally, um, which is one grade up above Paroba. Um, and uh, and we used that. It was a little bit more expensive, but we just wanted to be sure. I mean, and still compared to metal, it's cheap. Um, and, and, we and, and the way we connected that was, as you can see on the drawings, um, so we used two bolts on each um, connection, and we used a connection on, uh, on, uh, on two sides for each of the legs which you could um, screw on um, when the tower is lying down. It, it wasn't too hard um, to do that. OK. The last thing that we changed was the lifting pole. Um, and on the lifting pole, you can see what happened last time. So um, the, 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 the pole was made out of wood. I'm not exactly sure what kind of wood it was made out of, but you can see that the way it was attached to the hinge system was um, by going through the grain on the side where it splits more easily. And that's an important thing to remember about wood. It's, it's an anisotropic, which means that this, it's got different properties in, dif in different directions in terms of if its, um, of its strength resistance. Um, and therefore, it's important that you, you do use the right, you go through the grain in the right way. And another thing which, they, which could be done there is by drilling a through hole so that you go and and it's not so it's not a threaded hole it's a through hole and the bolt is going directly through and that will help it next time i mean we still want to use a wooden lifting pole um i wouldn't say that using a steel lifting pole is the optimal solution but it's the solution that we chose for this time because obviously we want to reduce steel 
where did we find that pole um, that was actually a um, remnant from another turbine which was in the area which hadn't been lifted um, so we are basically I mean I cut that bit off we cut that bit off um, and we took it just a, a few hundred yards a um, few hundred meters over over to this site um, and well there is one benefit about it is it's reusable so even though it is made out of steel you you can take it off and if you want to build another turbine in the area I mean a lot of people wanted turbines in that area a lot of people were interested after they saw it um, you could you could take it off and you could use it again so that there is that benefit to it <clears throat> okay um, well the other thing that we did um, which was which was maybe if they had more time last time would help them um, is that there is that we um, tested um, the system really component by component and that's actually how we discovered a lot of problems that would have ar ar arose um, so first of all we just welded the hinge system together and we tested the hinge system by itself did that all work did all the bolts go through correctly then we connected the hinge to the tower bottom and checked if those connections all work and then just modifying things as we went um, you know, normally we're seeing behind desks, we're not experts at doing these things, so you might be looking at the construction and thinking that's a bit amateur, um, but it's, it, it's true, that's how it is. Um, so then we tested module by module. Um, so we tested the first module, did that work fine? It did. The second module, did that work fine? It also did. Um, but then when we got to the third module, um, as you can see on this picture here, um the bolt which we used here was uh, 16 millimeters in diameter that's m16 um and unfortunately it starts to bend under the loads from lifting pole so remember how i told you earlier about the moments on this or two were fixed well now we had the opposite problem about a moment here in the center we've got all of the loads actually some of the highest loads are coming through that connection um well why did we choose m16 i mean i always thought it was too little but um the way that we why we chose it is because this pole already had those holes and it's actually with the tools we had very difficult to enlarge holes but in the end we found a local car workshop which had a larger drill bit um, and uh, it worked for just long enough for us to make this hole um, larger and then we replaced it with that larger bolt um, and the one thing what Giacomo was working on was the anemometer um, the anemometer uh, is uh, something which you can use to measure um, how fast the wind is going and in which direction it's going um, and that's important because um, you need to know for uh, if it's I mean for future site assessments and also to check what power you're getting from the current turbine um, and uh, it was working fine we attached it with ropes and some smart knots which Giacomo was good at making um and uh, then we observed that the uh, the wind small wind vane on the anemometer was uh, pointing the same way as the big wind vane on the turbine um well actually um you might be aware that uh, we want to improve this design um and uh, i've already touched on some of the ways that we'd like to improve it but now i want to sum it up for you in this, this is my last slide um so we want to reduce the number of lifting wires um, we think that maybe we can get it down to two or maybe not two, maybe three. I mean, we're still doing calculations. Uh, if we can do two, then it would be the same number as the, um, as the steel tower from Hugh Piggott, no, normal steel towers that are made. Um, we want to, um, we want to reduce the base of the design. So the, the, it was, it was 300 millimeters by 300 millimeters. And we want to reduce it to 200 by 200 and that will save a lot on um, material um, because it's not only saving wood um, but it's also saving metal because all of the metal which is holding the wood is less um, and uh, also the cross-sectional areas of the wood the individual members i want to reduce um, i want to reduce the number of nuts i want to reduce uh, the foundation bolt the one which is connecting here um, at the bottom i actually brought that one from germany um, last time because it is bigger than what you can find in brazil and obviously that's no good if you want to build things locally so i want to reduce that to the size you can find in brazil and actually reducing the base of the tower is going to help with that because you will reduce the moment on this connection um, and yeah did like some we often used a double nut like a counter nut to stop nuts from going so there we could use loctite um well there, i mean we can talk about it more later if people are interested but basically there's a lot of ideas and um 
Giacomo. I'm going to hand over to Giacomo now, and uh, he will uh, actually look at the more of the commercial side. And uh, um, so, thanks very much for your attention on my part. Okay, great, Alan. Pass you the pass you the control. Uh, okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Okay. Great. So um, I hope you can see my screen. Um, yes. Okay. Cool. Um, so um, thank you, thank you, Adam, and thank you, Marco. Um, I think now that we uh, have understood a, uh, a bit better how the design looks like and uh, which were the improvements we made in uh, in the workshop in 2017, we can follow more easily also the part about uh, costs, operations. And um, I, I, we would like also to try to make a, a qualitative benchmark um between uh, our wooden tower developed uh, in 2015 and 2017 versus the uh, i would say more conventional uh, metal tower uh, which is quite popular in the up uh, community and i believe also in uh, in the, the wind empowerment um, community um maybe this part can sound a bit uh, more boring, but actually it's quite important because uh, it fits directly um, uh, with the uh, uh, market assessment that uh, is one of the next steps we want to perform. So um, <clears throat> through the work uh, that Marco has done in 2015 together with the team at the time and uh, our work in 2017, we have collected quite uh, a lot of data in terms of the cost of materials. Um, <clears throat> that we have, uh, that we have, uh, you know, had to, uh, that we had to uh, cover over there. Also, um, I, we will uh, see which were the main tasks we have performed uh, during the the workshop, and then we will do a little bit of synthesis and trying to 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 compare the two the two towers. So. Um, <clears throat> Starting from the cost uh, of the materials, um, the first uh, key message is the order of magnitude of the costs. Uh, so we're not considering here, of course, the wind turbine. So uh, what uh, we have covered in this analysis are the, the parts that are listed here, uh, which I believe you are now familiar with. Uh, so the, the, the one, one is, of course, the tower main body, which also includes the connections which uh, was one of the things we have quite uh, improved uh, in 2017. Um, the other part can be uh, what we, the, the metal wise and whatever connects, let's say the tower to the anchors in the ground. Um, another part is the lifting system, which is basically some of the metal wires, the ones that are not connected to the uh, anchors in the ground and also the lifting pole, and also these connections here, and the foundations and inch. So foundations include the casting, uh, inch include basically the metal structures, uh, which uh, we have partially redesigned in 2017. The last part is about the wind turbine metal support, which is where the wind turbine is installed in, at the top. So uh, based on the uh, basically uh, receipts that we have collected over there and uh, with the information collected as well in 2015 by Marco, uh, we can claim a, a total material cost of around 691 euros. It's quite very precise. So I would say around 700. Um, it's interesting to see how this cost is split uh, among the different parts. Um, you can actually see how the tower main body uh, weights uh, no more than 35% of the total cost, which may be not, uh, uh, I would say, uh, something that you would expect. But actually look at how the lifting system and the tower to anchors items uh, weight in the overall cost, which is around 50% of the total cost. I would say the uh, uh, metal support and the foundations and inch are uh, lower uh, of lower importance, 
with these three items you cover pretty much 85% uh, <clears throat> or so of the of the total cost um, if we look at the uh, split from a different perspective so same total material cost uh, and we look at the material uh, type here yeah, on this Pareto you can see that the total cost is still driven by metal uh, <clears throat> so um, so even you, you if you have a, a, a you know a wooden tower uh, your your total cost is still driven by by the metal and that's basically because uh, you still have metal so uh, the metal wires uh, are quite a lot um, as Adam has, has said in our design we have uh, connected each module to the lifting pole to lift uh, the tower uh, the, the connections as well from the uh, between the lifting wires, the guy wires, and the tower got metal. So the wood comes, uh, the wood only comes 26, uh, it goes up to 26% of the total cost, which is not a lot. Uh, metal, uh, which, uh, which is the, the main uh, material type of the metal structure, of course, and the metal wood connections, which where you have studs, washes, nuts, and things like that, uh, summed with the, the metal of the wires give you a lot of the percentage of the total cost. So that is a, a quite important message and definitely is something that we can improve to make the design more, more green, uh, especially reducing the metal wires in numbers. So basically lifting the tower with less than four metal wires connected to the, the lifting pole would be a good improvement, as Adam has, has explained before, and will have an impact on cost. Sorry, Giacomo, just a quick uh, question. Uh, how high is this tower that you constructed? Yeah, so the tower, um, we, can, we can come back to that and uh, see better later on, but the tower is uh, 12 meters uh, tall, uh, the wood structure, and then you got the wind turbine support, uh, where the wind turbine is installed, which elevates, let's say, the wind turbine more than 12 meters, around 14, I guess. Uh, that's something that Adam uh, can can uh, can can tell us in more details, looking at the CAD model, looking at the the, the, the design. The order of magnitude is 12 meters uh, tall uh, wooden tower, and the wind turbine placed around 14 uh, meters from the ground. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so it would be very interesting to compare this uh, number with the, the one you have in your in your experience in wind empowerment. Uh, you know, it would be really, really great in order to understand where we are. We have an idea because uh, Marco has built uh, metal towers in the past. So in 2013, I guess, uh, one was built in 2012. You can tell us more. So we have an idea. But uh, maybe you have a, you know, a much wider population of, uh, of tower uh, made by metal, which we can, uh, we, can, uh, we can consult. So you remember the uh, uh, design improvements that uh, Adam has, has explained you uh, before. So this is exactly the same slide. We can see the expected effect on cost uh, and how these improvements could uh, make the design cheaper. Um, <clears throat> we are speaking about around 20% of, of, uh, of cost out. Um, so uh, your costs will go down from um, <clears throat> around 700 to around 540 euros. It's quite a good improvement. Uh, we still need to make some uh, cal calcs to uh, you know, confirm that this can be done and the design is still safe. But uh, um, <clears throat> these are the numbers that we have in mind based on qualitative understanding of, uh, for instance, the volume of wood you can reduce, the volume and weight of metal you can reduce. As I said, reducing the lifting wise could give a good benefit in terms of, in terms of cost. The, uh, the, uh, the metal wise are quite expensive. Um, and uh, as, as we have seen before, cover is a quite high part of the cost. Operations. Uh, so this Gantt uh, uh, shows you uh, which were the main tasks we have performed. Uh, so don't take this Gantt as uh, the optimized way of 
uh, building this tower. Take this grant as a picture of what actually happened over there. Um, so <clears throat> as Adam has said, we had limited material uh, in terms of pictures. So a, a, a limited understanding of what really happened in 2015 when the tower failed. So uh, we spent, uh, I would say, at least one day to understand, uh, trying to understand what happened and doing the failure investigation, uh, you know, looking at the parts, uh, brainstorming, uh, design solutions. Um, and then uh, we, we, we went straight away to, uh, to buy the parts. This is probably the night when we took the decision to recast the foundation in the right uh, angle. It was the key decision for success. We're glad to we have taken that. Um, but uh, the thing is that if you if you need uh, foundations which are casted with cement, uh, as Adam has anticipated, you've got a problem because the cast has to dry out. So this basically becomes the task, the you know the operation which uh, uh, puts a limit on the on the lead time of the overall construction of the tower. And uh, before, uh, let's say, if, if you don't have the foundations which are dried, you cannot start assembling and lifting the modules for test. Uh, building the modules and connections uh, <clears throat> takes time. Uh, takes time. Uh, luckily enough, we had uh, uh, the modules which were already built. Um, you know, we just had to do maintenance, uh, repair the wood where needed to be repaired. Uh, <clears throat> improving, uh, but 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 the connections were, I would say, the critical task we performed here, and uh, rebuilding the connections, again understanding what went wrong and uh, and and making the design, you know, um, also over there. Um, <clears throat> this task takes a lot a lot of time. It it really it has a, an advantage though, with which is uh, the more people you have, uh, the less time it takes. Uh, doing it too fast is not useful because the cement uh, has not dried, however. So um, <clears throat> then uh, you, you need to uh, do some metal work to build the hinge and the wind turbine support. If you don't have it, we had that. We had the wind turbine support, but you would do some metal work. So main messages here uh, are that uh, the cast is on the critical path, but is it really necessary? necessary? I mean, uh, this would be a good uh, topic for discussion, probably today as well. Uh, if you've got experience with the design, which uh, doesn't have, uh, doesn't need uh, the, the the foundations to be casted, such for instance, some of the metal tower, and we could implement that features in the wooden tower, that would be really great. And then why not outsourcing the woodwork if you can? You can save precious time. Uh, if you need to build more than one tower and you need to speed up with the, with the lead time. Uh, we also have an estimation of the total labor costs in terms of hours, which uh, if you uh, multiply uh, by, a, let's say, some sort of wage uh, and minimal wage, uh, you can uh, have an idea of how much would cost to build, to build the tower. In this chart, uh, you can see the, the benchmark that I was speaking about and I was anticipating. So um, <clears throat> we have brainstormed uh, some very, very high level requirements which the design uh, had to fulfill and tried to compare the wooden tower design versus the metal tower design. So one of these is cost. And uh, um, you can see in this chart a, a comparison in terms of material cost and operation cost uh, between the wooden and the metal tower, based on our experience. Again, I would like to, um, you know, discuss with you which figures you have in your experience for the metal tower. HP stands for you, Pigot, um, and uh, and you can see that based on our current design, even if your wooden tower costs a bit less, you need to do more work. You need to do more work for the wood. Um, mainly for the wood, um, and then you end up with the total cost, which is slightly higher for the wooden tower. It's not much higher. I haven't considered here the cost out opportunities, which 
we have we have seen were in the order of magnitude of uh, around 150 euros so it could really come up very close to the metal tower um we need to also highlight the fact that uh, we 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 worked as volunteers so this cost is uh, is not real but if you would have to build uh, let's say a, a business out of it or uh, simply include this data in the market assessment you would have to of course consider some sort of minimum wage uh, <clears throat> which are the other requirements durability uh, the tower has to last um, our figure in mind was around 20 years we believe that probably wood is not as reliable as steel and requires more maintenance so probably you have a plus for the metal compared to the wooden tower uh, adaptation and transportation uh, uh, however you got a minus for the metal the only reason the main reason for this is that, that we have a modular wooden tower you can uh, i mean uh, this disassemble the wooden tower you can you can transport it more easily than probably a 10 meters metal pole um, Operability, um, I believe that the metal tower is a bit lighter than the wooden tower because the wooden tower has the weight of the wood and the weight of the metal, which, is, which you, you still have it to connect the, all the pieces of the wood. Um, so uh, operability is probably easier for the metal because you lift it up more easily than the wooden tower. Uh, however, since you have a modular uh, uh, wooden tower uh, you can probably place your wind turbine higher especially if you increase the number of modules so the metal got a minus for uh, how how I you can place the wind turbine um, however the wooden tower is not easy uh, probably as easy as the metal tower to be built so the metal is a plus um, <clears throat> but of course the, the wood the wooden tower especially if you manage to to use a lifting pole which is made by wood is probably greener as a design overall the, ver the verdict is really uh, you know <laughs> it doesn't really uh, go in favor of one design with respect to another however there could be some showstoppers for uh, uh, one of the two designs so for instance if you're looking for lead time you need to build it quickly but the wooden tower is probably not your choice uh, especially if you need to cast the foundation um but uh if you don't have metal so your your metal availability is uh, is limited and you don't have such a, a long uh, you know uh, quantity of metal probably you go for a wooden tower of course maybe improved with a lifting pole which is made by wood as well and less metal wise so that's uh, again it's just based on a qualitative standpoint uh, I don't want to say who wins because it really depends on the case and uh, it would be good to feed this data really in a business case and uh, and understand uh, or a market assessment as we call it and uh, and understand uh, which which really uh, is better uh, is best let's say for a specific case so next steps here I, I think is the the last chart that we're going to present so I'm uh, I'm uh, I'm uh, you know um, calling also for uh, for any comment from uh, you know Mark or Adam on this part so the key the really key thing that uh, um, <clears throat> we need to do next if we want to go on with uh, you know in Brazil and being successful is to perform the market assessment we know that um, <clears throat> we've got data about the you know the tower uh, we've got data of course about the wind turbine uh, we need to do some survey about uh, you know other information which are required to do the market assessment about brazil maybe you already have it uh, maybe there is already some exercise performed or uh, about to do to be performed uh, so if that is the case you know let us know otherwise we can uh, do it and, and fit the knowledge and share the knowledge with you um, in the next months. Um, then uh, uh, this is really in line with our vision to develop, a, uh, to start the development of a, of, a, of, a, of a center of competence. And we think Diamantina would be a good idea because there we, we have one of the trainer, which Marco has mentioned. 
uh, which is it looks uh, you know really interested in and very very capable enthusiastic about about this project um, <clears throat> but uh, why not investigating also alternative and more disruptive tower design so as i said no cement could really improve the operations uh, but uh, you know there are parts of the world where world uh, where bamboo is quite uh, uh, used and the, there is a lot of experience there so we are thinking about a lattice structure made of bamboo rather than on peroba wood uh, or something more more disruptive we are open to ideas but also we have some next steps which are quite urgent uh, from an organizational point of view so um, one thing is definitely you know be more engaged with wind empowerment and explore collaborate potential collaborations but then uh, really also having our organization or uh, and fund a new one uh, is really key to get fundings uh, to find a partner for future projects so i think this is a very urgent step we need to perform in the near future and um, <clears throat> so i don't know if uh, marco and adam you want to add anything on this slide um, I think this uh, yes, um, I would like to add one thing, Giacomo, um, yeah. that uh, the design's open source. Um, so everything we've done is available to the wind empowerment community. Um, that's what we've already done on the on the lattice tower, wooden lattice tower. The other thing I'd like to add um, is you mentioned bamboo. Um, we have a bamboo design on the drawing board, or rather it's in my head. Um, and I think we are willing to work together. I mean, obviously our team will work together on that. And um, and we'd also like to engage other interested people in the wind empowerment community, if you see this as useful. Um, so I haven't got it to present today, but um, maybe we can, we can talk about it in Wind Empowerment India, your conference, that might be an idea. Um, yep, I think that's, that's all from me. Yeah, I think, guys, from my side, I think uh, will be just nice to to have some feedback from you. Uh, so I will just go to the question and answer session, really, and um, yeah, get uh, get your view on it, your impression, and whether we can uh, answer some of your questions. I would have one question. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, great. Um, yeah, first, thank you very much for this very interesting um, uh, webinar or um, presentation. It's really cool what you're doing. Um, and I, yeah, I wanted to ask like a couple of things. One, the um, wire size that you are using, like, or in general, did you also do a, like force calculation and stuff, some kind of optimization process to for this erection system to get the forces down and to reduce maybe the wire diameter and the 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 rod diameters. Yeah, so I can answer to this question. Uh, so we actually made the. Um a load analysis uh, about the lifting operation. Yeah. Um, so um, we are using at the minute five millimeters diameter uh, metal wires. Um, and uh, we, I think we got quite interesting results. So first inter inter interesting results is that uh, it's not true that having uh, four metal wires is better than having three from the standpoint of the uh, bending moment on the connections of the tower. This is quite counterintuitive, but for instance, if you remove the first uh, lifting wire, so the one that connects the module one to the lifting pole, you've got a better behavior, both in terms of uh, uh, loads in the, um, in the metal wires uh, in average, and also about the lift, the, the bending moment in the connection number one and the connect connection number two of the tower, which is of course one of the critical, uh, the most critical one. Um, second important result is that uh, I tried to model a, a, a high strength fabric rope behavior 
in terms of uh, um, uh, you know uh, loads tensions uh, in the wires and uh, I believe that we could really use for the weight uh, and the loads we have a high tensile fabric rope uh, rather than metal wires to lift the tower um, good thing is that you can test it uh, so you could test uh, incrementally the different modules and you can see whether the rope works rather than the metal uh, metal wires you need of course to increase the diameter of the wire if you use uh, high strength fabric up to i would say the candidates are eight millimeters 10 millimeters 12 millimeters um, what you is really really difficult to model is uh, the elastic behavior you have no data really for um the uh you have not much data around in terms of uh, young modulus or elasticity behavior about the, the the fabrics i haven't found them while you have quite a lot for the metal um <clears throat> so uh, it's it's work in progress as i said first message is you if you reduce the number of wires probably you got a better behavior and less uh you know bending moment on the connection of the tower Second message, we, we, we should test, you know, lifting the tower with, uh, with ropes rather than, uh, than, uh, than metal. Um, <clears throat> I've just one, I've just got one uh, consideration, which is uh, you don't know how fast or how the uh, fabric ropes uh, could wear with time um, compared to metal. So probably the best solution would be a hybrid uh configuration where you combine metal and high fabric uh you know rope to to lift the tower but you still have a safety uh one or two metal wise to lift the tower could i add a little bit to your answer jack I mean, <clears throat> sorry if you already mentioned it um maybe you could just skip to the backup slides installation that might help people understand a little bit how it's installed um and what we actually did in 2017 is what the, the gauge of the actual wires was, is for the guide wires as five millimeters and for the lifting wires, six millimeters. And those were rated for the loads we anticipated. Um, I'm just gonna explain that's also detailed in the Hugh Piggott manual, the design manual, which is something uh, the Scottish inventor of the turbine actually wrote. So we just followed basically those guidelines. And of course we made sure our loads were in accordance with that as Jack and already explained and he already explained the improvements but if you look here at the at the way we install it, so in the in the manual it, it says that you actually just have um, the two lifting points, one at the in the middle and one at the top. We added two more because we've got four modules. Um, so those are the four lifting wires, and like we said, we want to reduce them. So first of all, you've got to lift the pole itself, and then once you start lifting the pole, if you go to the next slide, you can see that you keep that that right angle is maintained, um, and you are lifting the tower um, using just using the tension of those wires and the lateral wires are just to keep it steady and the guy wires like I said the five millimeter ones they're the ones which actually just support it once it's already upright so it's, it's giving mm -hmm. that lateral it's giving that lateral support during the lift and then when it's upright it's giving the lateral support again so just mm -hmm. loosely in tension just just in tension yeah. yeah so just just to clarify so this comes this wire comes with the uh, pulley so with the uh, winch so we cannot really choose but it is available and these two uh, stabilizing the lifting pole to the lateral anchors could easily be ropes which you which you remove because the pole could be uh, you know uh, eliminated once uh, the tower is up uh, what I was referring before is that if you remove this, this lifting wire, for instance, you got less bending moment in these sections, which is counterintuitive. Uh, and uh, and then, as I said, what I, what I was saying is that you could think about the hybrid case in which, for instance, I would say uh, this probably, which is uh, lifting wire number three, could be uh, uh, metal, but then you have the longest one and some of them uh, um, pretensioned in the right way, but made of fabric, rather high strength fabric rope rather than uh, metal. That could be a solution. Yeah, just uh, guys, uh, um, adding from, from my side uh, two things. Um, 
if you give me the, the ball, I can also show, but basically Adam and, and Giacomo have done an amazing job on, on the report about documenting all the calculations and with drawings and actually the proper loading. So we can definitely share that if you are more interested in using maybe our model and for calculations. Um, the, other, the other thing I will say is also possibly Katerina pointing at you in this case, is more that uh, there are opportunities there we can see to use, uh, as Giacomo said, different materials. And uh, obviously thinking about forward uh, uh, to, to India, I mean, I know the textiles there, um, so ropes, and as well as, for example, bamboo or other materials that are, can be really, really uh, disruptive uh, design change for us that we would like to try. So there is definitely things that we can do. And uh, Giacomo is just sharing now the report, uh, which is available for, for everyone, uh, obviously, in the Wind Empowerment Network. Um, the calculations are really detailed, and, and if you are interested, you can, you can look at it without maybe doing now, but um, yeah, just to give you a flavor of it. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Michael, that's a good uh, reminder. I almost forgot. <laughs> <laughs> so one question, this is Jay from uh, France. I was wondering why you use so many guy wires. Um, I usually put up uh, 18 or 24 meter towers and I use one guy wire at every six meters. Yeah. <laughs> Was that just for the lifting, the lifting part? Yeah, I yeah, think the answer is that we were scared <laughs> from what happened in 2015 and didn't really know how the connections behaved. Um, but uh, going forward, you're right. <laughs> I think actually, if you go to the next slide, Giacomo, you can see we also have guy wires every um, every six meters. So the other ones are lifting wires. Don't get confused. And the other and the ones which were okay. giving the lateral support to the pole itself. So I don't believe we have any more guy wires than you do in terms of height of tower. And how rigid is the tower? Because uh, one problem I had with the metal lattice tower is the the tower is very rigid. And the moment if you have a problem with one of the guy wires, it, you know, the tower <laughs> tends to bend quickly. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a little bit softer than metal, so okay. um, it's, I think it's, it's I think it's fine. It's, it's stable enough. It's not too rigid. Okay. From my side, guys, uh, Jay, what you said is um, yeah, definitely interesting uh, comment. So yeah, again, we're using many wires uh, because of uh, our lifting procedure and the the ability to have uh, four wires there gives you the ability to test individual modules step by step which we found really useful for our uh, installation procedure. Um, in terms of guy wires, actually, uh, we use the same amount that you're using now. I would be really interested to know whether you guys are just following the UP good manual or whether you have done proper calculation on the maximum load or you know vibration calculations and understanding whether we can optimize that size. Because uh, I don't know what you think and what the wind environment recommendation is, but we thought there could be some improvement there. I think they're quite conservative and uh, the guy wires uh, are really expensive, like metal wires for the for the length that you need. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I, it's really expensive. So I think if you're building towers uh, of 20, 24 meters, as you said, uh, I believe uh, you spend a lot of money on wires, isn't it? Yeah, that's that's correct. I, I usually use, uh, um, for a 2.4 or 3 meter machine, I'll use a 6 millimeter guy wire everywhere. But um, for the larger machines, we use 8 millimeter wire for the, the top connection, the top wire, and 6 millimeter for all the rest. Yeah. Is this based on uh, some sort of calculation, Jay, or are you just uh, taking a recommendation from uh, Hugh? No, no. We, we did all the calculations about 12 years ago, and then I pretty just much stayed with that. Um, we're, it, it's certainly overdimensioned anyway. Um, but, uh, well, <laughs> I think that we probably could lower the, the size of the guy wires, so, especially the lower guy wires. The upper guy wire is the most important. So. It's mm -hmm. important that that one is um is well dimensioned. Yeah, I agree. You, you, your guy wires are too thick. Yeah, I think uh, guys, as as a network, uh, we might be might be worth looking at it. Uh, you know, kind of uh, maybe refresh your calculations, and uh, and maybe look at uh, you know for the lower wires, maybe to change material, because uh, I know some people.
people, they mentioned to me that in Africa they've been using just uh, fence wires. So I don't know how much they last and actually how safe it is, but I definitely know that some people have been using other sizes and other kind of materials before. And maybe it would be an opportunity for us to yeah to do something in India even even different with, with new materials or even ropes. Yeah, well, Hugh has done a lot of machines using uh, fence wire, doubling fence wire, but um, which is okay as long as there's not a kink in it. But um, the problem is, is I've had um, had a machine that came down and it was an 18 meter or 20 meter tower, and the it lost the the second guy wire, and just by losing one guy wire with high wind speeds, it pulled down the machine. So uh, I'm really careful about you know having a um, like having a rope. Um, I'm just wondering what will happen with the nylon rope after 15 years or 20 years. Yeah. yeah. With the, the sunshine, with the rain, with the snow, yeah. with the ice. Okay. Just to avoid that, maybe uh, it was clear already, but uh, uh, when I'm speaking about hybrid, it's just for uh, lifting, okay? So the guy why is connected to the ground should be, should be metal, I guess. Okay. Was just referring to uh, lifting, okay? Okay. Yeah, but for us, we use even for the lifting. I use every six meters. It's all um, yeah. a metal tower. We use a lot of metal tubular towers, so uh, metal metal tube is fairly flexible. Yeah, you. But you've got uh, you've got um, a modular design as well, or uh, how how is it made? Your lattice metal tower. Oh, the no. Well, for the the tubular tower it's just standard uh six millimeter tube after for the okay. lattice towers the lattice towers the towers that we picked up from a wind measurement company and so when they finished with the wind measurement system they uh, sold us or gave us uh, the the metal sections and so that's just a, a nice metal wind measurement tower that was designed to put up uh 50 meters and so we okay. then do an adaptation on the top to put the wind turbine on it <laughs> Yeah. In our case, we had four modules, and you know, before testing, okay, so you do one each. Difficult. Sorry. Okay, so you do one, uh, one guy wire at each connection point. One lifting exactly. wire. Exactly. Exactly. But uh, I don't think they are all necessary. No, one lifting wire per connection point. One guy wire every two connection points. Okay. Yes. So one guy wires every two connections. So six meters, six meters, and uh, one lifting wire every every module but as i said this could be um you know that you could have less lifting wise okay and i'd be interested to see uh how you fix the foot of the tower i didn't get to see a, a good picture of the uh how you do the pivot point yeah adam do you want to show the cad model yeah i've got i've got a cab model open of everything so um it's actually my my improvement Improved version. Uh, can I uh, just take control of the screen? Let me just. How do I do that? Yeah. Let me. Okay. Now it won't let me because it's just. Let, it just wants me to chat with you or something. Yeah. Okay. No, now no. I've got. It. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So here you can see whatever you want. Um, I mean the concept is the same. I've just. I've just made it a bit leaner as I already described. So. Um, can you see that? Yep. Yeah. So um, the pivot is a double hinge system. So you've got the lifting pole working on this hinge pin, and you've got the hinge, uh, the, the the main tower hinge system working on this hinge pin, which is going through like that. Okay. So that's how it's working. Yeah, I think you could probably lower down the amount of um, fixation points that you have by just having one plate. Instead plate? of having the two feet, yeah, you might. Really? Well, that, that's what we do is we have um, one plate, okay. one large plate, and so that way the two pieces are just welded onto that. So it's mm. uh, it's a, a solid piece. Can you send me your design? Yeah, no worries. Thanks. I'll send you mine as well if you like. Okay. Yeah, I'll put my my email up. That way you've got it. Thanks. On the chat. And so everything's fixed with um is bolt is are there some parts that are bolted have, and some yeah, parts we've got screwed. some welds we've got five millimeter fillet welds around here around yeah. here 
um, and on the inside, or on the under side, like under there, okay. the welds. So it, but we're basically going around all the edges where the metal's going to metal here on welding. So it's not that much. Yeah. Um, and then up here, we've got some other metal parts which are welded and bolted. Okay. So it, we, we use a mixture of welded and bolted connections. Depends what makes sense. Okay. And okay. And the tower head is fixed. The the pole at the top is fixed in two spots. That's... Well, this is what we what you're looking at is my idea for the next one. So this is a bit okay. different than how it was before. Um, but yeah, essentially we're I mean oh, using L plates again and fixing it to the legs of the tower. Okay. Um, then bolting and, it at uh, the top of the wooden. And bolting piece. it there and then welding it around there. And then okay. that's the pole which is which the turbine is going on to. Okay. Um, I had to change it a bit from last time because the tower has now got narrower, is now two hundred by two hundred and so Okay. Um, so, I mean, then you can also see on this model, you can see I've put some, some models of like things like the tools we use to, for anchor points and what we use to screw things into the pole. Um, these things called, um, thimbles. Yep. And yeah. But I think here, yeah. here you're going to have to have a, a, um, yeah, like the thing that's down at the bottom, <laughs> um, a, uh, a turnbuckle on the two wires. Yeah, that's supposed to be a turnbuckle. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that might not be the best representation, but... Can I ask a question, guys, about the foundations, uh, whether you have experience uh, or whether you think uh, this uh, design that we have shown would allow a foundation without cast casting the the cement yeah i i don't do um well i i fixed it um rock anchors before um it's difficult to find other solutions to really have decent anchor points i think one solution is to take a a tractor tire um and throw it in a hole and wrap a chain around it <laughs> and then bury it with ground again earth again Otherwise, you could okay. also take a pole if you had a, like an old um, concrete telephone pole or something like that and bury it, um, what would it be, uh, um, so that you're pulling on a whole pole which is buried into the ground and wrap a chain around it would work as well. So there, there are solutions like yeah, anchors that you bury and then you, you fill the cover up with dirt. But um, we haven't gone too much into it just to concrete this is a very known quantity and you know how it's going to work and how it's going to react. Have you got any pictures? Uh, not not now, but maybe you can share. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we've got a lot of pictures. I mean, Jay, just uh, from my side, Mark, we, um, we the first uh, metal tower we done um, in Brazil, uh, I actually didn't fix the base on the ground. Uh, so if you imagine what uh, Adam is sharing now, where you have basically the wooden tower sit on uh, these um, L plates on the bottom. Yeah. So we had the, the two long strips where you now have uh, your lifting pole coming out. If you imagine these strips kind of being turning the other way around, so we have a flat surface there. Basically, we just use that such that the tower will not fall. So we kind of put some feet with the L plates on the bottom, but they were just, uh, uh sitting on the ground uh without actually being um fixed to the ground uh because you, you can still i mean as long as you have the contact on it and you don't have uh, a lateral movement you don't really for a kind of the the structural uh behavior you don't really need a, a fixed point it can be if you can well be um a slider or something that uh, gives you just a reaction force uh, in 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 vertical direction, um, and then obviously the the the, the horizontal uh, one it will go for friction. So we'll kind of if you keep it on the ground, it will not kind of slide because it, yeah. it can't. So you just have to have a, a foot that's large enough. So you want yeah, it to exactly. be large enough so it doesn't fall over to the left or the right. Exactly. Or yeah. or that when you're pulling up the tower that it doesn't fall over towards you. That's the yeah. so you just have to have a very large foot. 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's that's what we did basically. We did a let's say a cross design or a X design on the bottom. They use the you know the the long uh, the long lever metal uh, um, L plates as uh, kind yeah. of stabilizers. Yeah. Yeah. So when when you lift the tower, you actually have a quite important uh, horizontal force. Um, <clears throat> so the ground has to be able to uh, transmit the reaction to whatever base you have. Yeah. Um, yeah, so but, uh, yeah, I agree. No, definitely. But that usually, what we you see that it doesn't really slide um, on the ground because uh, obviously it gets stuck into it um, when you have a. Ah, really yes. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. I, I'm really interested in this tractor tire solution because there was a tractor where we were, a really old tractor that, well, <laughs> they might have been using it, but it didn't look like it was fit to be used. Well, actually, Adam, uh, uh, you, you might not know because we did the anchor points used uh, in 2017 were done by me in 2015. But actually, the anchor points we got were not uh, casted completely. We actually used uh, what Jay described. We used uh, car tires uh, where okay. we put the chain around it and uh, dig it in like a couple of meters down and put some stone uh, around it and just cover it again with uh, with um, with a clay. Hmm. And that's yeah, that's the way we works uh, when the soil is the right consistency because our soil was very clay. It had yeah. a lot of clay in it. I mean, but that's interesting. I think we could explore that further because a lot of the soil around there was like that. Yeah. Yeah, but we've even had machines that we've used stakes to stake into the ground. Um, but usually it's for a short-term fix. I mean, I've got a machine that's near here that's been running for the last three years, um, which we're just using, what, meter 20 long stakes or T-bar that we've hammered into the ground. So it's possible. <laughs> yeah. But it, the problem with the vibration, over time it can come out. So it can, it can pull out of the ground. And with the rainy season and the dry season and the change in seasons, it can be a problem as well. If somebody's not paying attention to what's happening. Yeah, definitely. Is anyone else having any question, guys? Will be, uh, nice. Yeah, uh, one other question more related to cost, if I may. Uh, hi, I'm Lara, and well, thanks for your very, I mean, for your great presentation. Um, my question is, uh, I've seen the material cost, it's about 600 euros. Um, is it affordable for a Brazilian family? And if not, would it be, which would be the, the affordable costs? Oh, yeah, I, can, I, I can take this one, uh, um, Laura. So if you think about uh, like eye level, uh, um, let's say that uh, um, to make a euro, you want to have four uh, reais uh, in uh, in um, in Brazil, and uh, but they're kind of uh, your um, your power of acquisition power is actually the same on euro. So fundamentally, you can think of that for them, six hundred is it is it is quite expensive. Um, uh, an average salary uh, there will be about uh, four hundred euro um, a month. Which will be equivalent to you know 1,600 reais, which is the local currency there. So definitely expensive, uh, not uh, not really affordable if you if you have to buy it uh, like this. Um, that's why we yeah uh, in the, the the business case there is is difficult. Uh, I think we didn't we didn't spend uh, enough time on the business model, but uh, electricity uh, obviously in uh, in kind of uh, um, cities, uh, it's quite affordable, so uh, it's cheap fundamentally. So the business case does, it definitely doesn't hold uh, uh, on uh, on cities or around cities because it's quite well electrified. Um, however, in the far away, uh, so where there's not rural, and not electrified area. Um, yeah, the, the business case could be there because they usually use uh, diesel generators, and uh, the the fuel there is uh, is quite expensive. Um, plus, any machinery there is quite expensive. So, I think we, yeah, we need to look at it properly. Uh, we need to look at obviously optimizing our design and takes as much cost out. Uh, but uh, at the minute, uh, it 
it, it, a normal standard family or a farmer wouldn't be able to buy two Biden Tower um, yeah. without uh, having a proper business mo yeah. business case, business model, um, yeah. returning the investment in many years. If I can add something, uh, I think the answer to this question uh, really relies on the big picture. So on the on the market assessment, considering not just the cost of the tower, of course, but the cost of the wind turbine and how much power you can extract, whether the wind is the optimum solution for the Brazilian case, whether whether a hybrid, you know, solution for power generation would be better, including uh, uh, maybe solar uh, or diesel as well together. So really, that's a very good question, which stays, uh, which which is included in a very, in a much bigger picture. And the answer can can only exist if we look at the big picture. So what people need and the, uh, the cost of the tower will just flow into this market assessment as one of the elements uh, to have to have the you know a representative and effective answer. Jack, and I made you okay. the moderator if you want to share the screen. Yeah, thank you. And but maybe, does it answer yes, the question? Could, yeah, um, yeah, yeah the, yes, thanks. So uh, maybe you could you should consider also the um, the effect on cost due to the higher volumes that you could buy because I guess that you just buy both um, uh, all the bolts from a local let's say supplier and in a very few quantities, so maybe the price were also quite high. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's definitely that's definitely one of the elements, yes, which uh, influence the market assessment. Yeah, uh, Laura, you're right. I mean, if, if you think about the cost we incurred, we went to a normal shop and bought uh, X amount of what we need. Uh, we didn't really get any scale of economy discount or whatever. So probably if you go to a main supplier or you order your standard parts, uh, you know. Um, on the on internet, you might get uh, obviously cheaper cheaper supply chain. Uh, I have some just a few comments also, and thank you first of all for all the work you've done and the great three D graphs that you showed us. Um, I agree with you that uh, uh, for the next steps, uh, in, uh, besides improving your design, you also need to, to do a market assessment to find out uh, if there is a market for this tower, if there are people who need it, and in which uh, countries these people are. So uh, I will also try to, to help you through the network of wind empowerment uh, to find out if there is interest uh, in other countries. And uh, I, I think uh, it, it would also help if you could contact uh, the market assessment group, the working group of wind empowerment, because they have done a lot of work uh, uh, with market assessments globally. Um, I, I don't think they have done it for towers, but uh, they can tell you a lot about uh, methodology. And uh, I also want to add another aspect uh, to this uh, uh, tower assessment because uh, I am uh, doing some uh, life cycle assessment which uh, assesses the environmental impacts of, uh, of products. So uh, I saw in the in this uh, life cycle uh, assessment that uh, the the metal of the metal tower has significant uh, impacts uh, to the total uh, as part of the uh, total life cycle of the wind turbines so maybe you can use this as another argument when you are presenting this tower against the metal tower i can share with you some results and some graphs that you can use if you want yeah, that, thank you, Katarina. That is a very good point. I think it, uh, it stays within these requirements uh, behind this. So um, mm -hmm. um, I don't know whether you are doing a life cycle assessment in terms of environmental impact. I guess mm -hmm. that that's the case, right? Mm 
Okay. Yes, the lead cycle assessment is for environmental uh, impacts only. Okay, that, I, that will be very interesting. Yes, uh, it's a very, it's a very good point. Yes, I think you can use this as an argument, uh, even uh, in proposals that you may want to write, uh, because the economic aspect is not so clear. I mean, uh, it is not clearly uh, less expensive, uh, but uh, maybe the environmental part is an argument in some cases. Definitely, yeah. So do you think uh, you, you think our uh, our let's say estimation of cost of uh, a material for the metal is about right? Um, <clears throat> let's uh, compare let the same 12 meters uh, metal height you know metal tower. Mm -hmm. Do you think we are on the right uh, order of magnitude for the cost of the metal in terms of acquisition? Uh, as far as I saw in my studies only because. Practically, I haven't uh, I haven't constructed a tower, uh, but uh, not I yet. <laughs> not yet. But uh, I said that for towers that are for the smaller turbines, uh, they cost around 300 euros the materials, and for the larger turbines, they are double 600 euros. So I wanted also to ask uh, if this tower that you constructed is for a specific size of wind turbine or it can support uh, all the pigot turbines, for example. Yeah, the, the cost that you see here that we used for doing our uh, benchmark assessment was the um, basically referring to the pigot metal tower that we used uh, in Brazil. Uh, and it was uh, for a three meter roto diameter turbine. Mm -hmm. uh, on a 12 meter um, metal tower mm -hmm. with two metal pieces of six meters basically um, welded together. So, so we'd have to assess the loads. We'd have to assess the loads, but I think that the same tower could support a larger turbine because the the critical part is lifting. Um, so in, during during operations, I don't believe that the that the tower is going anywhere near to its limits in terms of structural handling. So I think uh, but we have to verify with calculation that you could put the largest two picket tower on this, two picket turbine on this tower. Mm -hmm. So the data that I have uh, uh, so a bit uh, lower prices also for the metal towers. Yeah. But I guess it depends also in the country uh, where you buy the materials. Uh, yeah. So uh, definitely. Yes. Yeah, so, I guess uh, you're not so far from uh, from my results because they had 600 uh, euros for for a tower that supports a 4.2 meter turbine for the metal tower. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah I think when we sell a, a metal tower for a 2.4 meter machine, we sell a tower for around a thousand euros for a 12 meter tower. But you sell it. So the materials, how much do they? cost if you sell it you need to consider also the effort to build operations it, right? exactly yeah. that, that's including so, a little bit of the welding as well welding the pieces okay. together welding the flanges on the metal tower yeah. and in time um for, for me well there's a shopping time <laughs> in buying all the materials <laughs> but actually building the tower to to put together um, a metal tower it takes four hours to yeah. do a 12 meter tower. So in four hours you've built your tower. So it's well, if you're a good welder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so the, the material cost obviously uh, I guess UJ uh, building them in Europe. Um, we obviously use the supply chain, local supply chain in Brazil. And the main driver for us to explore the wood and uh, supply chain it was that uh, we knew that the wood there is um, is obviously locally sourced and is actually cheap in comparison to metal. Not okay. necessarily in the place where we actually build the tower because that was probably the, the only one big metal city in Brazil. Uh, but Brazil uh, uh, has a really good source of uh, wood and cheap cheap wood, possibly even cheaper than what we found uh, uh, in Montes Claros where we started. Um, will be, yeah, I, 
I think uh, we had a quite interesting comments once we build the turbine and we shared a little bit uh, our uh, sorry when we built our tower and we shared the tower uh, with some of the Brazilians because in our <laughs> yeah in our region in other regions of Brazil uh, he said you can easily find a really nice straight 12 meter wooden pole <laughs> so the eucalyptus <laughs> yeah and it costs you like 50 50 50 euro, the equivalent of 50 euro so <laughs> we were like yeah after two weeks working on this then someone comes and say yeah well you can get it there at the shop uh, on the corner kind of thing it was like oh nice but yeah, I mean, there are, there are other things that uh, we could consider locally in Brazil. I mean, Brazil is such a big country. If you think about Brazil, is as big as Europe. <laughs> so yeah, there is a lot of learning uh, that can be taken from there. We just will be a little bit more volunteers working on it. Yeah. I have one question for Katerina, if I can. Uh, if I may, so about um, what do you think about uh, um, a, a potential active involvement in the India conference? Uh, something that could be related to that, could be related to Brazil. Um, what What do you think? Mm, I think um, it, it could be interesting. Uh, maybe if you want to to give a, a training on this, but we should uh, also find out uh, if there is uh, interest for this in India also, uh, maybe to contact the organizers in India and see if this applies to, to this country. So in, in that case, it would be very interesting if you could give a training during the first uh, week of the conference. Do you have the, the do you have the contact of this local organization, Katerina? I mean, will you be able yes. to put us in contact and yes, understand yes. with I will the do, appetite? I will do this uh, after this webinar. I will put you in contact with uh, Jorge from uh, Minvayu. It's the organization uh, in India, which is a wind department member also, and is organizing uh, uh, organizing the conference. So we can find out if there is interest there. Yeah, that would be awesome because I think, uh, yeah, I mean, if it's not uh, that kind of wood, uh, we could just ask the question of what uh, what kind of wood they got and um, have they got other materials, like, for example, we mentioned bamboo. Oh. Um, yeah, wh why not trying to do something there uh, with bamboo then? Because we we just look at it. I think it's a cultural kind of uh, limit that we have in Europe because we don't use it that much. But when you actually look at other cultures across the world, I mean, people build uh, several floors building only with bamboo and rope. So mm -hmm. structurally, you can do much. You can do a lot. Yeah. Now, now I have another thought. Uh, maybe it would be also an idea if you wanted to to submit a paper to the conference as well. Uh, because uh, I think it could be interesting from a scientific aspect also. You have done a very careful work and uh, address from different aspects the, the issue. So uh, maybe you also want to, to submit a, a, a paper in the conference because there is a, an institute that is uh, co-organizing uh, the conference in India that uh, is a a research institute that uh, could be interested in this. Yeah. I think it would be really, really interesting if you can give us a contact as well. Uh, we have a really detailed report that uh, we would like to share with uh, all of you guys. And uh, is it is basically finished. Uh, is in drafting mode because he missed like bits and bobs uh, there. But uh, basically, the content uh, is finished. So. Uh, happy, happy to share and get some feedback, and also we could use the same kind of content to, to yeah, to do a small article or a publication if that helps. Uh, mm -hmm. that. Uh, one question, Katerina. Um, uh, in the India conference, is it planned to have some uh, uh, idea generation uh, like workshops where? 
actually based on the experience of some of the guys, we can actively uh, basically work out together alternative ideas or you know more efficient designs, you know something more active rather than a, a trainer and a, a, a trainee. Uh, if I understood well, you ask if there will be more practical sessions. No, just an uh, open forum where, uh, you know, um, basically people can uh, just brainstorm oh, solutions yes. to problems. Okay. So there will be two parts. The first week uh, will be just trainings, practical trainings, and the second week will be a conference with discussions and uh, presentations and uh, brainstorming and knowledge sharing. So uh, it, it will have both uh, aspects. Okay. Okay. So, any other questions from anyone? Okay, that's it, I guess. Uh, thank you very, very much. Uh, I think it was a great uh, webinar. And uh, uh, I will I will put you in contact with uh, uh, these people in India and uh, also uh, we, we can make some posts in uh, the forum so that uh, we can keep uh, discussing about uh, your questions and give more feedback. And uh, for anyone who didn't uh, participate today, I repeat that uh, we will upload the recorded version of the webinar in the website. So you will have the chance to, to follow this. Okay, thank you very much, everyone, for joining. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.